Hey guys, it's Panther, and today I wanted to go over the top 5 mistakes that mid laners are making in solo queue. Before we begin, have you checked out our website yet? Gameleap.com has hundreds of advanced guides by challenger players just like this one. Hit the link in the description below to sign up today. Mid lane is one of the highest impact roles in the game, however a lot of the time in lower elos I will see mid laners not making the full use of the potential that their lane has. Mid lane is also one of the most straightforward roles in the game. A lot of it has to do with your mechanical skill alone, and your map awareness, and your macro knowledge. This means that the highest level of play, mid lane attracts very mechanically skilled players with a lot of macro knowledge on the game. This is really awesome because it allows us to learn from players like Faker and Apto by watching what they do and trying to replicate it ourselves. Personally, I learned pretty much everything that I know about mid lane from both Faker and Apto, just watching hours upon hours upon hours of their VODs and trying to figure out why it is they were doing the certain things that they were doing. I wanted to share the things that I learned from these players and even other players, it's not just exclusive to those two, and show you guys some of the mistakes that you guys might be making that you don't even know are mistakes. Hopefully this saves you guys a lot of time from having to go and watch Faker or Aptovod yourselves. Now nothing in this video is going to be anything insanely mechanical, because that is not something that you can learn quickly and pick up quickly. Mechanics take a lot of time and practice to learn. I want to give you information based tips here. Now with that being said, the first tip is going to revolve around mechanics, however it's something very, very simple, and it's just a general rule of thumb. That being, you do not want to jump into a ranked game with a champion that you are not familiar with. If you jump into ranked playing a character that you are not familiar with, not comfortable on, then you are likely not going to be able to do all of the basic mechanics that you need to be able to do in that game to succeed. This includes the most basic of things like CSing properly, trading properly in lane, and even late game combos and stuff. Normals and ARAMs are my two favorite ways to practice new champions that I might want to pick up. These game modes are great because they can introduce you to new champions that you haven't played yet and you have a chance to practice them without your rank being affected. Remember, never first time a champion in rank no matter how simple you think it might be. I see a lot of people auto-filled mid lane and they pick Malzahar, and they've never picked Malzahar before in their life in any lane. Now no matter how simple and straightforward Malzahar's kit is, you're not going to be able to play him to his fullest potential if you've never played him before. Now Malzahar is just a simple example, this applies to any champion in the game. Don't first time in ranked, make sure you have at least 10 or 15 games before you even attempt to play a champion in ranked. Now the exact number of games that you might need to learn a champion varies from person to person as well as what champion it is that you're trying to play. A general rule of thumb for when you know that you're ready to take a champion into ranked is you know the skill order, you know the build, and you're doing all of this naturally. You're also not having to conscientiously think about what you're going to do in a trade and it just comes naturally. If all of these things hold true, then it means that you're able to spend more time looking at the map and thinking about how the game is progressing as opposed to focusing on playing your champion correctly. This is also the reason why one trick succeeds so heavily. They're able to just play the champion and it comes to them naturally and they're able to focus more on how the game is playing out instead of focusing on their mechanics. Now that was a bit of a long tip to kind of explain why it is so important to not first time champions. So the next tip we're going to keep very short and very sweet. The second mistake is that people are using their wards wrong and not purchasing control wards. Now this is one thing that I know you have heard before, however I'm just going to go over what you're not hearing about this tip. The first mistake that I see with this is people are not purchasing control wards at all or they're purchasing too many control wards. There are only two reasons to buy a control ward and that is it. The first reason is to grant vision denial and the second reason is to grant vision yourself. Early on in the game it's better to buy a control ward to grant yourself vision. 
If you are in the mid lane and you have a control ward, you want to put it in either pixel brush on either side of the lane. Do not put it in the river brush. Pixel ward gives more vision early on into the game, as well as having the chance to see the enemy jungler on the scuttle crab if they are doing it. It also allows your jungler to pass to the scuttle crab a lot more safely since it denies vision in that brush as well. Now this part you might have already heard, however the next part I guarantee you have not heard from any player ever. Now there are other places that you can place your pink ward, however I want you to only place your pink ward in the pixel brush. This will allow you to get used to playing around certain vision. 95% of players are not used to looking at the map as a whole and it's very hard to train yourself to look at the map as a whole. So if you are able to focus on one certain portion of the map that you almost always have warded, then your map awareness will increase without having to put in the massive time investment that you would normally have to put in to looking at the whole map. As a result, the pixel brush ward is the best because it is the most neutral ward in the game, as well as giving the most vision in general. More aggressive wards do exist and more defensive wards do exist, but pixel ward grants the most information overall. Now the second part of this is that people aren't buying too many control wards. You should only be buying one or two control wards in the lane phase, and that's it. The reason that you only buy control wards earlier on into the game is because once you get to later levels, your warding totem will be able to keep up with itself in cooldown, so that you can pretty much always have something warded unless it is being swept. The people that are buying a control ward on pretty much every single base are probably just blindly copying challenger players, and while it works in challenger, it works for a completely different reason. Remember, challenger players are able to see us so well that a control ward 75 gold is not a big deal for them. They're able to maintain 10 CS per minute, whereas other players are not able to do that. As a result, control wards are relatively cheap for them, so they are able to buy them and use them more for their vision denial aspect as opposed to granting themselves vision. However, if you're not a challenger player, then it is probably best for you to only focus on getting one or two control wards in the early lane phase. Now this is not to say that you shouldn't be utilizing the vision denial aspect of control wards, however you should not be attempting to use it earlier on into the game. Once mid to late game hits, however, you do want to be using a control ward to deny vision. This is only on Rift Herald, Dragon, and Baron though. Any other attempt to deny vision as a mid laner is going to be a gamble because there are no standard wards in most elos. Even as high as diamond, you are not going to see any standard wards aside from Baron Pit and Dragon Pit. For this reason, you want to keep Baron Pit or Dragon Pit control warded if possible. Remember, just because the vision game falls primarily on the support shoulders does not mean that you should be neglecting to buy control wards to help out. Moving on to the third mistake that I see most often, people do not CS properly. The main reason why people are losing so much CS in the laning phase is because they are focusing too much on trading with the enemy laner and harassing. Now harassing the enemy laner is usually a good thing most people would understand this. However, it will quickly become a detrimental thing if you are sacrificing CS in order to make a trade. Remember, if you are dropping 15 to 20 CS just to get a kill, you would have resulted in more gold from just CSing instead of going for that kill. It is almost always better to just zone the enemy laner from CS while CSing yourself as opposed to trying to go for a kill. You should only go for harass on the enemy laner if it won't result in you losing any CS. This is the area of play that I see the most room for improvement in, in 90% of cases. If you are able to do this well, then you will be able to build a 10 to 20 CS lead in the first 10 minutes of the game. If you are able to do this perfectly, that lead can grow to as much as 50 to 60 CS in the first 10 minutes. Players like Faker and Dopa are able to build such huge CS leads because they are able to focus on both trading and CSing properly at the same time. The fourth mistake that I see most often is players will take the wrong trade patterns. Now what I mean by this is they use the wrong trades for the wrong reasons. 
Players will use an all-in trade, for example, when they don't have kill pressure, and they should just be using a poke trade instead. They might also be trading without all of their cooldowns, or when they don't have the mana to do it, or their runes are on cooldown, for example. Now the way that you want to fix this is go to a website that stores VODs. League of Graphs is a very good example. And search the best players for a certain champion. It can be pro players or one tricks. Open a few of their VODs and see how it is that they are trading in the early game. Try to copy how they trade their harass in the early game, as this is most likely the best way to trade in the lane phase. Some things to pay attention to are the order in which they use their abilities. If they are not using an ability, then note why they're not using that ability. And their rune cooldowns, and how they trade around rune cooldowns. Those are the biggest three things. You don't want to just be looking at ability cooldowns and the order in which they use their abilities, because there is more to a trade pattern than just those two things. I can't go over the trade patterns for each individual mid laner since every single one is different. However, I can give you the resources that you need to know what those trade patterns do look like for each champion. Now the last mistake that I see is that mid laners are not utilizing their roam timers properly. Most mid laners are either roaming way too much or not roaming at all. There are very very few mid laners that I see that actually roam the proper amount. Basically the only time that you want to be roaming as a mid laner is when you have something called a roam timer. In order for a roam timer to present itself there needs to be a few conditions. The first is that you will not miss any CS or you will miss less CS than the enemy laner. This would mean something like you shove the lane all the way into the enemy tower and now you have nothing else to do except for either auto the tower or go to a different lane or base. Oftentimes in the early game you don't want to really be autoing towers since you don't do that much damage to them so you might look for a roam opportunity there if you don't have enough gold to buy anything. The second condition is you have to have enough resources in order for the roam to be effective. You can't roam if you have less than half HP and a quarter of your mana, it's not going to do anything. So make sure that you're topped off, or at least close to it, and that you can provide as much pressure as possible with your roam. If you find yourself shoved to the enemy tower but you have no health, probably best to just go for the base, or go into the river and look for some honey fruit. The third condition is there needs to be somewhere to roam to. For example, if both top lane and bot lane is based, there is absolutely no reason to be roaming at that point in time. So often I'll get somebody that's playing like Talon or Aurelian Soul and they'll say, why is my team losing? I'm roaming so much. And then I'll look and their mid laner will have a two level lead on them. Keep in mind, you only want to roam if it's going to be effective. Your roams mean nothing if you're not able to get anything for them. So the majority of the time, you should still be laning even if you are playing something like Talon or Aurelian Soul, and then only look for a roam when the opportunity presents itself. Do not try to force a roam to happen. If you enjoyed this video, make sure to check out our website, GameLeap.com. We have hundreds of guides just like this one done by Challenger players. If you really want to push your limits and increase your rank, this is one of the best ways for you to do that. Click the link in the description below and break free of your rank.